Hugs and kisses on my toodles. Hey, toodles. We are reading in the great issue. So let's get started. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages to read. So let's see if we can get started. Knowing when it's time to burn your bridges. It took a rehab or Sherry a little time to get to know her answer. She met a guy in high school, and their relationship quickly evolved to a friendship, to romance. There were some red flags in the relationship right from the start, like the fact that he regulars talking behind her back and joined her a gentle lack of respect. But as Sherry described it, they were in their honeymoon phase, and she was also insecure and a little naive. So she overlooked these things. But the longer these were together, the more the negative behavior started to overwhelm the positive. He was mean and manipulative, she told me. He never wanted to hang out with me anymore. He only wanted to be with friends. And he would blow me off and call me clingy and annoying for wanting to spend time with him. This is when I started to become real insecure both as a person as well in the relationship. Really? Oh, in the reason. I began to feel like I just wasn't enough being constantly told that I was annoying and crazy. Spoke me because I wanted to be around him was starting to take a toll on me. His emotional abuse literally made me feel like I was a bad person. Sherry and her boyfriend started arguing all the time and eventually he broke up with her. A week later, through they were back together. I was really vulnerable and in love. So as soon as he would apologize to me, no matter how significant it was, I would take him back instantly. What follows were three years of the same respected pattern. Sherry's boyfriend would treat her badly and make her feel awful, and then he'd do something to make her sick, stick around, but kept beating her back to met the potions and abuse. And he was so good at that, Christy left herself take the blame. I would try to express my feelings in ways he understood and respect, but I never got anything in return. Instead of being silent and listening, he told me where I was coming from. He simply wouldn't care. He would actually flip the situation on me, call me crazy, annoying, and clingy, etc., etc. He claimed that I wasn't a good girlfriend because I didn't trust him. Each and every time he did this, I started to truly believe him. I started to believe that maybe he was right and maybe I was being a good girlfriend. Sherry was in a very bad place, but she couldn't make her self give up on the relationship. It was hard to think about letting him go after all we've been through. I was even harder imagining my life without him. I would let the good overwing the bad, although looking back, the bad was always outweighed the good. It was the person pattern again and again. No matter how much I wanted to go forgive him, I always did. And I would crave each and every time. After three years of this bridge had let Sherry somewhere, ship was off again. I was completely broken. And I questioned Every day, how someone I was so good to would say he loved me, who I gave my all to, could end up 
and leave me without looking back. He said I was a damaged person whom I spent an enormous amount of time trying to fix. I never gave up on him. I took the verbal and emotional abuse. I took being treated less than I was deserved, and I hate up every single lie he would tell me. There wasn't one thing that I wouldn't have done for him. It literally came to a point where I had lost myself. I wasn't hanging out with my friends and family anymore. I was miserable all the time. I couldn't concentrate in my life, daily life. And I was constantly worrying about what my boyfriend was doing. And I was completely a different person. Someone I truly had not recognized anymore. It was to the point that Sherry began speaking to her father. And the a uh, devoted Christian about God. She started praying every night for guidance to took to heart her father's advice. That she ignored all the daily dis, dis, discretions and truly opened my heart up. This led to the breakout. Sherry Penny needing she finally saw the bridges between herself and her boyfriend was leading her to a life of pain and humiliation and that it was time to burn it by reacting to the dependency on the relationship with father and God Sherry gained the strength to burn the bridges that badly needed burning I have built a relationship with God and seek Him often to pray to Him every night. And I'm finally free. And I am so happy. I am finally myself again. And I'm turning over a new leaf. I am finally realizing that I can't keep back to what broke me. It's been even months since the breakup. And my ex is currently trying to return my life. But for the first time, I finally have the power and the strength to say, no, I know I deserve better. As Sherry's story illustrated, burning a bridge is a huge deal. And none of us want to take that short thing lightly. Maybe the bridges is a group of people were known since you were kids. Maybe it was someone who once meant an awful lot in your life. These aren't the kind of people you let go of easily. And the last thing you want to do is burn a bridge when it isn't necessary to do so. But now you know. The first question to ask is this. Is this person deleting me? Let's talk about that a little when someone is deleting you oh draining i'm sorry not deleting draining you he or she is killing your emotional energy and draining relationship is one where no matter how you're feeling before you are with that person you feel worse or afterwards this is not always easy and diagnosed for example you may laugh a lot and feel in high spirits while you're together. But at the end of the night or the next morning, you feel warm out and depressed or even a little ashamed. Does that happen a lot when you're with a person? To me, yes, it does. And I'm not going to mention his name. If you so, that person is draining you. Or maybe you spend time with someone who has deep heart-to-heart -heart talks with you. Or you get into a lot of heavy stuff. But these conversations always leave you feeling less optimistic. 
about life. And a prophecy if these conversions making me exciting, but that person is draining you. I do have somebody like that. I do tell my dark thinkers secrets to this guy. And he is draining me. Wanting, feel, he feels sorry for me because of things happen. Don't feel sorry for me. Think about yourself, not me, guy. People who drain you might not even realize they're doing it. They might not be actually trying to hurt you, but they still hurting you. For whatever reason, the relationship is toxic for you. And you're not going to be able to grow as long as they stay in that toxic environment. It's like my garden story. The soil was putting the plant in evil soil and just was just wrong. Swore for those plants and the lesser I changed the soil, my plants were going to keep dying. So the first thing you need to do is when you're consulting burning a bridge and determine whatever you Beginning draining not, if not, or in time to burn that down. That was happening to me when I was in the middle of my battle to stick with football. I had a bridge of group of people who spent a lot of time playing, partying with. By a lot of times, I mean just about every night I had a great time while we were at the club. But I slowly realized that this bridge only led me to one thing, more partying. I was hoping things I should not have valued and making things a priority. I should not have been prioritizing. I was accepting to move my life forward by doing the very thing that were hiding my life back, holding my life back. Many times I would wake up and next morning feeling awful about how I was living my life. And I tell myself that I need to do something better with it. That cycling during me, but I didn't see it for what was bad when I realized it wasn't. My son Trenton was born and I realized that I needed to be a better man for him. That I could see this group was doing me, doing to me. I was never going to grow as long as I kept going out with pe those people. So I finally converted myself to burning that bridge. Another question to ask yourself when you're looking at the bridges is where does it end up? This is questions a lot of us never think about when we're considering our relationships. I am married, and yes, I have a guy that's chasing after me. He knows I'm married, and but I will say this much. The more the guy talks about wanting to do husband and wife things with me, like, I'm going to go ahead and say it, sex, hugs, kisses, um holding hands, spending more time together. It makes me realize a lot. I realize a lot. It makes me appreciate my husband even more. It makes me want my husband more. It makes me do more for my husband. I've never told my husband this. But I think tonight I will tell him. The more that Gabriel wants, the more, okay, the more this guy wants, the more I want my husband. The more he wants me, the more it makes me want my husband. I want my husband more and more and more. I don't want nobody else but my husband. So I want to spend the rest of my life with my husband, and it's going to happen like that. Okay. We give too much credit to early moments. Those moments give us emotional height. What's the final page of the story? Often the, the damaged relationship is consulting. Us happening slowly and you won't even notice it until it's too late. 
Maybe that guy you're seeing treats you pretty okay. You don't fight a lot, and you're not got distance rhythm going. Except there, that thing about his way of putting down your dreams. You tell him about something, a mission you have for your career or for something to do on the side. And he probably explains to you why that's a bad idea. So how things end up if you stick with him? They probably end up with realizing 10 years from now that you regret that you regret or nothing's gone bigger after life. Then when you had the chance, it is something you really want. Let me go back to a group of people I need to cut myself off from. One of the things that I considered me to do was taking a look at the future. I imagine myself with those people three years, 10, 20 years down the line, still drinking too much and still taking away too many drugs, still wasting my night over empty pursuits. When I look and honest look at where I was going with these people, I realized this group wasn't going to evolve into something more than nutrition. And the positive was the way I'm going to be just what it was. And once I saw where that I was going to end up, I knew I had to be over. I had to do way better than that for my son. At the same time, you could have a bridge that leads you to a group, a relationship that isn't in the best shape and doesn't feel like it's helping you grow. But before you decide to burn that bridge, ask one more question. Is this, this is an important, oh, Okay, never mind. Hang on, one more question. Is that person or are the people that group are trying to get better? This is an important one for me because I am back on talking responsibility and what it means when someone is commanded to talk into responsibility. Maybe you have a friend who spends your time together talking about her problems. She's got a boyfriend problem. She has no money problems. She and her sister are always fighting. And she hates her job. You come home after being with this person and feel as if you're just run, run a marathon because you're emotionally exhausted. Then you think that maybe it's time to burn this bridge. But when you think about what your friend has been saying about her situation, she's just about conserved herself to leaving the boyfriend. She's watching some videos on YouTube about budgeting her money better, and her relationship with her sister is as much a mess as it's been, but she just applied for a new job in her company and she knows she will like it more. When you think about it, you realize that she is trying. She might be a long way from getting where she needs to go. And you're probably going to endure a lot of exhausting communication conversations with her in the future. But she is interested in working on her life. As you're interested in working on yours. Maybe you need to have a conversation with her about shifting the balance of your nights out. But this night be a bridge worth keeping. Maybe this is the kind of person you actually need in your life. Going forward because she's making a real effort and that affords can keep you expired. 
to get the greatest you, you're definitely going to need to burn some bridges. By taking, thinking about the issues you've discussed, you're pretty good sense of which bridges those are. Now comes the hard part. And we'll get into that next Tuesday, the hard part in this book. Until next time, guys, I hope this helps you out a lot. So, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are new to my channel, I would like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. And... Give me a 30-day free trial. See if you like it. Till next time. Bye.